Hi, I'm Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Benches YouTube channel. Today we're starting right back at the beginning of soldering. We're going to be looking today at soldering boards and soldering blocks. When you come to solder your metal, it is important that you have a nice heat proof surface. And in front of us here, we've got a variety of blocks. The majority are good, but there are some bad blocks or bricks that you do not want to be using. And I'll come to that a little bit later. When you open up the jewelry catalogs, look in the tool suppliers on the internet, there is a wide variety of boards and blocks to enable you to solder upon. They are pretty much all good. They all rely upon directing the heat back at what you're soldering on, which is a good thing. The one thing that you don't want to use is something like this shelf, this tile that goes into a kiln or any sort of um, kiln blocks or kiln bricks because those basically absorb the heat. This is pretty, pretty heavy. And it's, what's that, it's about eight inches, seven inches square. It's no good for soldering on. It's great for in the kiln, but not to solder on because when you direct your heat upon to the surface, it sucks and takes the heat away, which is not what we're after. You're gonna be there a long, long time trying to solder a ring or a bangle because this is sucking the heat away. You do not want to use one of these. Although it's a heat proof surface, it absorbs the heat. For me, one of the best type of blocks, and this is the type of block that was used hundreds of years ago. It's a charcoal block. This is quite a small charcoal block. These are basically frowned upon now because the trees have to be cut down to enable them to be made because they are obviously of wood and it's a burned wood. If you do happen to use one, that's great. They are a fantastic surface to solder onto. I would always recommend you getting some iron binding wire or stainless steel binding wire, wrapping it around the outside of the block and twisting it and tying it to hold it together because they do have a tendency to crack and to split when they are heated up. So that keeps the whole block together. Or make a little tray from a piece of copper, perhaps, or a bit of aluminium, something like that. Bring up the sides to hold that neatly. And because it is charcoal, it will mark the bench. So perhaps put that on something as well. So why is a charcoal block a good surface? Well, first of all, it reflects the heat. It sends the heat back onto what you're actually heating up which is great. It also, because it's charcoal and it's carbon, it does provide quite a neutral atmosphere around what you are soldering as well. I use this charcoal block for making small little balls. And within this, I've got some little dimples and indentations that I've used. And you can even carve out, I haven't done on this one, but you can even carve out channels so when you are melting some scrap down you can melt it down in the channel and you've made a little ingot to enable you to roll it out or to hammer it but due to its natural um, substance it will wear and the more you heat it in one particular area as you can see here the more the block is going to wear away so it's not something that is going to last forever that may only last you perhaps a year through constant use but as i said it is found upon but it is a very very good soldering material there's another type of brick and it's sometimes called like a honeycomb brick and you can see through it because there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of holes in the brick the problem with this brick because it's like a ceramic if you drop it or bang it, you will split it and you will break it. But these blocks are great because little holes in it will help you put little pins in to hold the item that you're trying to solder steady or closed or to align bits and pieces upon the block. So 
that is a very good surface. The one side here is lovely and smooth. This side here is slightly undulating, but as there's holes in it, it's very good for positioning items of, 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 of wire or of bezels to hold them together when you're soldering. You've also got some of these chips. I think they are ceramic chips. And whilst they are nice and loose, it enables you to come to suspend something, to put something into the chips when you're soldering it, and that will hold that in place. And you can move these around, and you can move it into whatever position you want. And this is quite nice. I don't use this type of soldering material. It is good, again, it reflects the heat back at you, and it is good for standing something up like that, as opposed to using a third hand. So again, this has to be put within a container as well. Sometimes you'll burn the container. So although it is a good medium, you do have to be careful in what sort of container you put it into. Put my wedding ring on in case the wife tells me off. You can buy soldering boards. You can buy them in various sizes. The ones that I quite like buying, and I've made my own little soldering station, are these 12-inch boards. Things, these may be solderite boards that you can get across the world. It's quite a dense, condensed fibre board. None of these contain asbestos, by the way. That is completely um, illegal to have nowadays, and more other substances have been made and created. Um, that provide a better, better service than an asbestos. Soldering boards, absolutely brilliant. This is about a nine millimeter. You can buy them in this sort of size here. This is about 12 inch, about 30 centimeters in size. Brilliant if you want to protect an area that you're going to be soldering. You can buy them thinner, six millimeter as well. That is a brilliant little size, that little size there. Perhaps if you wanted to put your charcoal block on, and that's an ideal soldering board. As you can see, we've used that plenty of times. The good thing about these blocks is that they don't wear away. No matter how many times you heat them, they stay the same. But over the years, as this one shows, it gets really, really messy, as you can see. This one I must have had for about 15 years, and there's bits of borax all over it. There's, there's goodness knows what, there's bits of cool heat or thermogel by there, borax and so forth. Whilst this really can still be used, the fact that there's borax on it when the borax gets heated up, um, borax is a flux. When the flux and the borax gets heated up, perhaps it'll stick to the gold or the silver you put on here. And there may be some cross-contamination between gold and silver on this block as well. So this block has been retired from daily use, but it is still um, ideal for perhaps putting your torch down on uh, so the nozzle doesn't burn the bench, for instance. So it still has its uses and its benefits. The blocks that I like to use are these little soldering blocks. Again, I think these are pretty much the same sort of material as the soldering boards, but in a block or a brick format. As you can see here, I've used this one quite a few times. This is brilliant. This is about six inches, four inches by an inch. Absolutely brilliant. And again, you can get it in a slightly smaller size. That's about, uh, what's that? Five inch by three inch by one inch. They sound very similar to that tile, but they're not. These boards reflect the heat. And there's another one there, not quite sure where that one actually came from. This is quite a, a dusty one. So I don't think this is an ideal one. I don't use this one. This is a, someone I think someone gave to me at some particular stage. So all these boards are brilliant. These, bl these bricks, these blocks are absolutely brilliant. Stay away from the tiles. Stay away from the kiln tiles, the kiln shelves. I know they're heat proof, I know they can withstand heat, but they absorb the heat. And especially if you are soldering perhaps quite a large bangle, for instance, just, just don't simply have, I use this as an example, your board like this with the flame coming down, because the flame can go away and the heat can be transferred away. Try and have perhaps a brick behind it, something like that there, or a brick on the side like this here, that when you're soldering in this direction here, the, the bricks will reflect the heat back so the heat is not being drawn away. And that is vitally important. These blocks reflect the heat. 
Once you've soldered upon a block like this, you can pick the block up. It is only a localized heat in the middle. It does not dissipate the heat. It does not spread the heat, keeps it local and pushes it back onto the job that you are soldering. And that is the majority of problems that I get from at the bench members or YouTube viewers, the fact that when they're trying to solder something, they're not using these bricks or these blocks or these pads or these boards. They're using perhaps a household brick or because they have a kiln, they'll use these kiln shells. And the heat, you might as well, I don't know, be, be having a, a, a humongous, a huge torch on a very small little piece of metal. But because those blocks and those tiles will be sucking the heat away, your piece will never get warm. So it is important, and I keep a variety of these around the place. And if you are working on your bench, like I do here, something like this little block here is ideal to keep, or in fact, as you see on our films and at the bench, keep this little block here in front of me all the time. I never like to get off my bench whilst I'm working. I try and do all my soldering. I can bring this into position by here. I can solder, I can push that out of the way. Anything larger, well then yes, I would go and get something, a board like this, if I was putting a bangle, because that would protect my bench. And if you had a dedicated soldering area, well then I would use a board like this, to put down and then perhaps you'd have a perhaps lazy Susan or a soldering turntable on top of that. And if you're a member of At The Bench, that's our online training website, atthebench.com, I have a video showing how to make a fantastic little soldering area based upon using these tiles that is completely heat proof. It keeps all the heat confined to the one space. So, tile, no good. Don't buy it. Any of these others will be absolutely fantastic. Charcoal block, brilliant, frowned upon. It's not ecologically friendly. Soldering boards, the thin little six mil soldering boards, absolutely brilliant. But my favorite is this brick, this block, six by four by one soldering block. Absolutely brilliant. And in our workshops downstairs, we use these six inch boards and these are slightly bigger but as you can see, they don't last forever. So that's my guide on soldering surfaces, soldering bricks on boards. My name is Andrew Berry for At The Bench's YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. Put the ring on your peg and just get the file on the inside. And we're going to remove, he says, we're going to remove just a little bit of metal on the inside. I'm using the inside, and as I move the file, I'm moving it around the inside of the ring, and I'm looking to remove a little bit of metal, not